made me whole. He has taken my sins away. He has taken my sins away. He has taken my sins away and made me whole. Jesus, the Son of God, has made me whole. Who died upon the cross has made me whole. He has taken my sins away. He has taken my sins away. He has taken my sins away. And made me whole. Praise the Lord. Let us be seated. Thank God for another day. We give God all the glory for the first Sunday in the month of April, the second quarter in the year 2020. It is not by accident that we're here. Nothing happens in the house of God by accident. God knows that before even the creation of the heaven and earth that you will be here today. And as you have come, he will bless you abundantly in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. But then let us bring out a Bible and open to John chapter 8. I will read from verse 1 to 12. John chapter 8 from verse 1 to 12. Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives. I'm reading from King James Version of the Bible. Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives. And early in the morning, he came again into the temple. And all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery, in the very act. Now, Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he had them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which had it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Had no man condemned thee? Verse 11, she said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Praise the Lord. If Jesus did not condemn you. No one can condemn you in the mighty name of Jesus. But he left a caveat there. He said, go and uh, sin no more. Go and sin no more. That is what he left with the woman. So yes, you have done it before. These people have accused you. They say you are this, you are that. But they are saying that they are, if they say that they, are no, they don't have sin, uh, let them cast the first stone. So the Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Everyone 
ascend and come short of the glory of God. The topic that I have here is go and sin no more. That is the caption of my message. Then the message, we were going to look at it some very short sections. Number one, understanding of sin. The harmful nature of sin, number two. The origin of sin. What I call the gateway, the gateway to sin. Then I will anchor it by stating the various types of sin. Because most of the time, when we are talked about sin, what we always look at is adultery and fornication. But there are some other levels of sin that we probably don't know. And the message of this type is for us to examine ourselves and see whether we are also as guilty as the people that we are accusing this woman of adultery. Because one thing I have noted is this. When you are pointing one finger at one person, how many are pointing at you? How many, how many fingers? Praise the Lord. So when you are praying about sinners and all that, you also have to examine yourself. So all those things are what we are going to look at by the special grace of God in today's message. When Jesus Christ asked that woman, when we go again, when we go, we can also read John chapter 5 from verse 1 to 14. We don't have time. Our, our time is fast spent. John chapter 5, verse 1 to 14. The statement which Jesus Christ gave to that woman is, is a command. It's also a command to each and every one of us as followers of Jesus Christ. That does not mean that we will never be tempted again. It doesn't mean temptation will come. It will come. But when we agree with the thoughts and temptations that come up, sin comes into our lives. We are therefore admonished to stop the desire from being conceived. In other words, we should stop the temptation from becoming sin. James chapter 1, verse 14 to 15. I want us to follow closely this teaching because it will help somebody today. I thought I would hear amen. James chapter 1, 14 to 15. It he directed the processes of sin. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires. There are many, there are many words for sin. So it can be drawn away. Praise the Lord. It can be transgression. It can be when you turn your back. Okay? It can be backsliding. We will see all those things as we go ahead in this topic. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when the desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. That is James speaking. And sin, when it is full grown, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Brings forth death. Like in Romans chapter 6, verse 23. Romans chapter 6, verse 23 it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through, the, through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Bible also says in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, that for all have sinned. Oh, there's no exception. Everyone have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But the beauty of it is that according to Ephesians chapter 4 verse 32 that Jesus Christ is the one who has forgiven us all our sins. Now, that is why he came. When, I, when you read the Bible you will see that 
most of the challenges that we have is are consequences of one form of sin or the other, but not all. Not all. For instance, in John chapter 9, when you read from verse 3 down, you see there was a man that was born blind. Uh, when the people saw him, they said, who committed this sin? Is it the mother or the father? Jesus Christ said, no, not even the man himself that committed sin. Not even the mother, not even the father. So that the work of God can be glorified. So, the, so, that, so that God can manifest himself. God can show his power. So not everything that has to do with sin. Every challenge that we have. Then when you also go to the book of Job, you will see the fine description that the Bible gave to Job. Sometimes God reveals, removes all the covering from you so that he can also see how you love him. The Job, that all the people... Job chapter 1, when you get home, you read because of our time. All the men in the east, there was none as excellence that Job. Job David, the devil was going to and fro. What happened? Say, have you seen my servant Job? Say, it's because you built a wall of protection, a wall of fire around him. If you take it off and he loses everything that he has, <laughs> that I will have time to say, no, not him. Go and try him. Those are just the two examples I want to give. But David quite illustrated it in Psalm 51, verse 5. He said that my mother, that it was in sin, I was conceived in sin. So each and every one of us had that Adamic nature in us. Praise the Lord. He said, behold, I was Shaping in iniquity. And in sin did my mother conceive me. All of us were conceived in sin. So it, kept, it comes to my first outline. What do we understand by sin? Sometimes, colloquially, people define sin as Simple instructions. S, standing for the simple. Then I, instructions. Then L, N, neglected. When you neglect the simple instructions that God gave in the Bible. The simple instructions neglected. But from the scriptural perspective, sin is the transgression of the law. In other words, whosoever committed sin transgresses the law. First John chapter 3, 4, verse 4, then 8. Then when we get home, we read 9 to 24. In Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, God said, This book of the law, see, anybody who transgresses the law has committed sin. Say, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. In other words, what that is telling me is that any day you don't read your Bible, you have committed sin. Say, you shall meditate day and night. Meditate. It's not only reading, glossing over. When you read it, you meditate. You digest it. You assimilate it. That is what the Bible teaches. So any day you don't open your Bible, or some of these things that I'll send to us this daily uh, a manual that is that's sent to us. 
say you meditate. Look at what Nehemiah did. The reform of Nehemiah. When the people, when they went, because people were longing to hear the word of God. It's a long time. Immediately the priest comes out. The people does, they will do what? They will stand up to hear the word of God. The harmful nature of sin. I will use a few examples here. The number, that is number two. The harmful nature of sin. I call it the toxicity. toxicity. Forget my big grammar. It's just the harmful nature. Praise the Lord of sin. See, in Genesis chapter 48, I'm using the story of Jacob that is called Israel. Genesis chapter 48, I will, from verse 13 to 20. From verse 13 to 20. Praise God. Somebody asked a question during our side the scriptures. They said, how do we explain? The way you explain is to come and listen to the word of God. And you, you have a pen and paper. You write these things down because somebody will ask you on the street. When they ask you, you remember that you have already, you know it. But if you come and you don't write it down, by the time you get out of that gate, you have forgotten it. But when you forget, what do you do? You go back to your jotting. And you recall. In Genesis chapter 48, 13 to 20, Jacob set Ephraim before Manasseh, who was older, who was older than Ephraim. What did Joseph do? Joseph said, No, sir. You are you have, you have positioned them wrongly. The father said, I know what I am talking about. I know what I'm doing. Leave them. And my prayer to everyone here is that your blessings will not be exchanged in the mighty name of Jesus. What is due to you, you will get it in the mighty name of Jesus. There will be no negative exchange of your blessings. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Says. Just said, I, you don't know what you're doing. But that said, leave me alone. I know what I'm doing. Say, nobody will cross your blessing. In the name of Jesus Christ. He blessed Ephraim more than. More than. Was that his name? Manasseh. This name. Then in Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 17, he said, Ephraim will become ten times as rich, richer than Manasseh. And it happened because it is the blessings of a father. In fact, the blessing of a grandfather. That is where little children, I'm speaking to you. Don't, one thing I did when I was growing up, I made sure that my father and my mother never cost me. I don't know how I did it, but maybe you come and ask my wife. She knows. They never lifted their hand like this. No. I tried to avoid it like poison. Praise the Lord. In the Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 17, Ephraim has become 10 times more successful than Manasseh. So successful, the thing got into his head. That was why David said, Father, please don't bless me in such a way that I will be so rich that I will forget you. I will be so comfortable not to worship you. There are some people that are so comfortable. Wait, tell them, come, let us go to the house of the Lord. They say, uh, uh not today, tomorrow. Ephraim, because of the special love that God had for him, he became very, very complacent. We shall never be complacent in the things of God. 
in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It was so successful. Then look at what sin did to him. In Hosea chapter 4 verse 17. Hosea chapter 4 verse 17. Now Ephraim had abandoned the one who preferred him instead of his brother. And enjoyed himself to I do. Ephraim left God. Turned his way back on God. May we never turn our back on God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Turn him on back on, on God. He became very complacent and offended God by transgressing. My prayer is that whatever thing that will make us to offend God, we will not remember it. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Then, in Hosea, chapter 5, from verse 9 to 15, Hosea chapter 5, verse 9 to 15, then God said that Ephraim, because of his activities, will become desolate. So Ephraim will become desolate. Ephraim became desolate because of sin. Then in First King, when we get home, we dig, we, we dig into most of these things that I'm saying. First King chapter 17, verse 8 to 18. Then we read 24, verse 24. That is the story of the widow of Zarephath. When we go, with this, it's very, very, an inf- very interesting story. Very interesting story. The widow in verse 18 said, I'm just picking these things because of the time. She said unto Elijah, What have I to do with thee, O man of God? Had thou come unto me to call my sin to remembrance? You see, did I ask you to come and visit me? But as he have come now, my son, there's no life in him. It is because of my sin that he, be- he died. Then in Luke chapter 5, verse 8, Peter asks, Peter said, when Jesus Christ, because he is the creator of all things, he created the heaven and the earth. He created the seas. He knew where the fishes were. He said, let down your net on this side of the river. Immediately, the eyes of Peter opened. Peter said, leave me. I I am a sinful man. Say, I am sinful. Praise the Lord. When we get home, we read. In Mark chapter 5, verse 8 to 13. Mark chapter 5, verse 8 to 13. It's a very familiar story. The, the madman of gatherings. The madman. See, Jesus Christ asked, What is your name? He said, My, We are just legion. We are plenty. But the devil, you know, the devil, the devil cannot walk on his own. He has, must have a vessel to walk with. He must enter into someone. May he never find you. In the mighty name of Jesus. When Jesus wants to cast out the devil, the devil said, No, please, sir. Don't just throw us out. Say where? Say, throw us into these pigs, into the swine. The sin that this man was carrying, even the swine rejected it. The swine, the pig, as dirty as the pig. Pigs are. They rejected it. You know, the pigs say, I am not, we are not going to carry this dirt. We are not going to carry this sin. It's too heavy for us. Do you know what the, the pigs did? They went into the river and said, instead of me to carry this out, we will drown. Praise the Lord. Amen. So they went and they drowned. Then in Isaiah chapter 6 verse 5. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 5. The prophet was prophesying. He was a big man of God until the scales in his eyes opened. What happened? He just cried and said, I am a man of unclean lips. See, I am a sinner. I am a transgressor. Dwelling in the midst of people of 
in the midst of transgressors. When we get, we see the origin of sin. When we go, we go to the book of the beginnings. That is in Genesis. That is where it started. Just a simple command from God. He said, look, you have been praying the kingdom of God, let it be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Now I have given you this little kingdom. I am the king. I am in charge here. What I am telling you is that these are your limits. Go this, go this. Don't go this far. By the time, that's why whenever you want to hide anything from a child, don't tell the child. They say, you see that cake in the fridge, you don't eat it. Immediately you go out, you know what they will do. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Just leave the cake there and go away. By the time you come, your cake will still be waiting for you. But once you point out that something is there, they will say, let me go and see what mama is talking about. Praise the Lord. God said, see, let me go and see what God is talking about. See, this one, ah, that's where I'm going to go. On all the beautiful trees, they transgressed. And from there, sin came to the world. Genesis chapter 3, verse 6 to 10. Through their disobedience. Then, when you look at it, you will see, when we get home, we read Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 to 10. Matthew 4, verse to 10. You see, when Jesus Christ, after he fasted, he went and said, look, let me, then the, the devil came there and began to tempt him. Even Jesus Christ himself was tempted. Began to tempt him and began to tell him all manner of things. He said, you are hungry now. I, the devil hits you when you disrespect. Say you are hungry. As you are hungry, uh, you say you are from heaven and you are the bread of life. According to John chapter 6, verse 35. Say you are the bread of life. No problem. This stone here, turn it into the bread and feed yourself. You know, the devil knows the Bible because the devil was there from the beginning. Praise the Lord. But when the devil begins to quote the Bible, listen very well. He doesn't quote it to the fool. He takes the portion that suits it and listen to you. Then if you are someone who does not read, you will believe. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So you will see how the devil tempted Jesus Christ. So in First John chapter 2, Verse 15 to 16. First John 2 verse 16 to 16. You will see that Peter warned us about all those things. The same way that the devil, that was what Peter was saying in that first John chapter 1, 2 verse 15. He said, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life, when you categorize all those things, that's exactly what the devil did to Jesus Christ. Say it's not of the Father, but of the world. So when you look at it and take them together, you will see that there are many ways that sin came, comes into us. I, I classify these things as the mouth gates. Matthew chapter 15, verse 1, verse 11, the mouth gates. You see, it, is the, it is what goes out of the mouth that corrupts. And Matthew chapter 12, verse 34 says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Then there's one thing I, I call the, the ear gates. What you hear. The evil, corrupt, evil communication corrupts good manners. First Corinthians, what do you hear? What do you listen to? This is what, when you check what is even happening now and all that, you will see that a lot of people have been influenced by what they hear. 
by the, by the time they start holding you to be accountable, you will see them. Their face will be on the floor. Christians don't look on the floor, they look up. Looking up to, unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Praise the Lord. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. When we get home, we read, The ear gates, the eye gates. I mentioned the mouth gate, the ear gate, the eye gate. What do you see? What do you see? Job said, in Job chapter 31, verse 1, he said, I have made a covenant with my eyes that I will not behold a maiden. See, he made a covenant with his eyes that he will not see evil. David refused to make a covenant with his eyes. And he saw what he was not supposed to see. You will not see what you are not supposed to see. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. The Matthew chapter 5 verse 28 says, If you look at a woman with the intention of lusting after her, you have committed adultery. If you see, so don't see. How do you see? What kind of movies do you watch? What kind of stories do you listen to? Then there's one I call the internet gate. The devil fills the eyes with corrupt images and ideas. Which websites do you visit? Who is your social media influencer? Who? You see some people, they'll be following you. Who are you following? If anybody, if you, there's anybody that you should follow, you should follow Jesus Christ. You should tag him. Praise the Lord. Amen. So now I will come to the concluding part of it. Various forms of sin. We always limit sin to adultery, fornication. It's all forms of wickedness. Forms of wickedness. The Bible says that whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Whatever is not of faith is sin. Romans chapter 14 verse 28. Three. Anything you don't do, you come to church here in the morning, you don't even have faith. All you have is, the, is that uh, as pastor sin me. Praise the Lord. Amen. I don't want him to visit me now. And begin to ask me, call me on the telephone. You come with faith and say, God, you must today, by, by, your, by your grace, meet me at the point of my need. That is what I have come. What have you come to see? Like God asked Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12. He said, what do you see? What have you come to get? There is no one that goes in the stream, to go and fetch water and goes empty-handed because the stream is always... God, Jesus Christ said, I am the living water. I'm the bread of life. If you eat me, you will no longer hunger and you will never test that your fathers who ate manna in the wilderness, they are all dead. But I'm inviting you because I am the bread of life. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, it says, without faith, without faith, if you must come to God, you're coming to the church or whatever, you must first of all believe that God is and he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So, when you come, you come with faith. Number two, the types of sins. Knowing to do good and you refuse to do it. When you know to do good, you know that preaching the word of God is doing good. You are depopulating the, the kingdom of uh, Satan. You are depopulating it. 
And you're also calling blessings to yourself. John chapter 15 verse 6. He said, go ye, go and preach. So that when you preach, your prayers will not be hindered. Say, I want open heavens over you. I don't want your prayers. I don't want your heavens to close. That's what God is telling us. You know it is good. Then, you also know that that is James chapter 4 verse 17. Then James chapter 3 verse 17, he says, you, you know what is good. Like we have had throughout this morning. You know, the pastor even gave us example of his belt. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, you know, you know that. Then what you will go is that pastor's belt is torn. Jesus Christ. And the man has money. Couldn't even buy belt for himself. Praise the Lord. Amen. So he has a lot of money. Couldn't buy a belt for himself. But this, boy, this man, they talk, look, look at whether he has money or not. He, he went and bought a belt. You know that I have not eaten. Am I your brother in the church? Your sister in the church? Or you see me with tattered clothes? And he didn't clothe to me. Go and read Matthew chapter 25. You see, when I was a hungry, you did what? You fed me. You didn't say, come, bring your hand, let us uh, pray. That is not what the man needs that time. What he needs is what? Hamburger. Whopper. Praise God. In fact, if you give him hamburger, he will not feel it. Just go and give him whopper from uh, what the kings are being. What did they call that? Burger King. Uh, that's what he needs. And, uh, and some, some uh, sprites. Praise the Lord. You say, ah, go. You have worldly goods. You came to say, ah, the man is using smart television. And you have 60, 65 inches that you are not using or whatever. Come on, take it. Come on, take it. Say, God bless you. Praise the Lord. That's not what the man needs that time. Number three. Murmuring and disputing. When you murmur, dispute. It's sin. That was what made the children of Israel not to get to the promise. Every time, murmuring. In fact, I called them. I said, look, if I'm to be a professor, I will establish the school of murmuring. Praise the Lord. And the Israelites will be the teachers in that school. They can murmur about everything. When they don't have bread, they will murmur. When they don't have meat, they will murmur. When they don't have water, they murmur to the point where the man of God became angry. He then asked them, say, am I even your father? Am I your natural father? Why are you disturbing me? Then God asked him in Numbers chapter 20. Say, speak. He went and said, went and hit. And that prevented him from entering the promised land. Philippians chapter 2 verse 14 to 16. Murmuring. But what should we do in 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 other words? Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 and 7. You say, whatever thing you are passing through, what do you do? You take it to God in prayer and in supplication. Then there is what they call secret sin. Leviticus chapter 5 verse 15. And Psalm 19, verse 12. David prayed to God to cleanse him from secret faults. The secret will never remain forever. One day your sin will find you out. Numbers chapter 32, verse 23. Who can get the examples from Ananias and Sephora? Ananias and Sephora. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5, from from 1 to 11. When we get home, we read. Secret. Achan. In Joshua chapter 7, 10 to 26. Joshua chapter 7, 10 to 26. Your secret sins, no one may know, but God knows our thoughts and actions. Matthew chapter 6, verse 4. And Jeremiah chapter 23, 23 to 24. That place is very interesting. When we get home, we read. 
One day it will come to limelight, like Solomon said in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13 and 14. And you will be judged. That thing you are keeping secret today, you will be judged. You see, your works will pass through the refiner's fire. If it's able to come out there, then you know you have made it. In Romans chapter 2, verse 16, see, every work must be judged. Then, five, presumptuous sin. Psalm 19, verse 12. Psalm 19, verse 12. Brethren, I took time, some of these things, I took time to search the Bible, like we said, search the scriptures, to go and fish them out so that we will not make that mistake. Psalm 19, verse 5. Psalm 19. Psalm 19, verse 13. When we take matters into our hands, that is presumptuous sin. By, to, by ask, ask, uh, acting to our dictates, to take things of God for granted, instead of being guided by God, when we become bold and daring, like the example I gave previously, Numbers chapter 20, verse 7 to 12. David, Moses was very familiar with God. God says, speak. And he didn't speak. God is sovereign. He does his things as he pleases. In one situation, when you look at the Bible, you see that there's no particular miracle that he did exactly the same way. He's the unchanging changer. All you have to do is to listen to advice and comply. He doesn't need your permission. God is an autocrat. He rules by decrees. Praise the Lord. Amen. When you go, go. Say, rules by decrees. Let there be light and there is light. He didn't consult you when he was saying so. And he does not have any need to consult you. The story of Oza in 2 Samuel chapter 6, 1 to 11. 2 Samuel. Uza was behaving as if he wants to help God. You don't help God. The ark of God was shaking. Uza just jumped up from where he was. He said, Uza never minded his business. He was fighting for God. But said, I'm going to slay. I'm going to slay you. Then there's one other one that is Nadab and Abihu. In Leviticus chapter 10, verse 1 to 7. They were lighting strange fires. You don't do that. It is not your responsibility. That's what they call, mind your space. Watch your space. Mind your space. When you come to the house of God and all that, know what you ought to do and what you don't. What is there for the pastor to do? You know it. Praise the Lord. Then in Mark chapter 16, verse 16, he said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. And you disagree. <laughs> say, it's not so. It's presumptuous, and you say, no. That is not, that is not, uh, that's not, it. that's not the word of God. Also in Galatians chapter 4, verse 4 to 6, it is written there that there is one body, one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. And you say it is not so. One faith. Be careful. David calls it a great transgression. There is what you call besetting sins. Besetting. Always there. You are fighting. You want to know what to do. You cannot. It's only God that will help you. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1. So we are compassed by a cloud of witnesses. And besetting sins. That sins that easily beset us. It is, there are sins that you even practice before remembering what the Bible says about it. 
lying, gambling, cursing, cheating, fondness for food, fondness for food. There are some of us immediately we see food like this, we lose our cool. And there are some of us, our, our, our besetting sin is che che chewing gum all the time and licking sweet. Thank God for dentists. Praise the Lord. Amen. You are there. You should therefore lay aside all these things. All these things that easily beset you. You should lay aside. That is what the Bible says. Then, number seven, willful sin. A sin we cannot, we, we commit knowing that such is sin. It is called caused by disobedience through weakness in the flesh. Look at what Paul said. Say those things that I like to do. That is not what I do. Romans chapter 6 verse 1 and 2 he says that should, are, are we, should we continue in sin and we want the grace of God to abide? The Bible says that God forbid it cannot happen. Paul said look at me. Everything. I'm not strong enough. That is why in Philippians chapter 3 verse 10 he says that that I may know him. Know the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering be made conformable unto the death. When we know the truth and refuse to abide by it, you shall know the truth. That's what the Bible says. And the truth shall set you free. Shall make you free. John chapter 8 verse 39. Look at the story of Felix in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 24, verse 30, 25 to 27. Acts 24, 25 to 27. When Paul began to minister to Felix, telling him the truth of the gospel, Felix said, you, you, almost, uh, you almost got me. Just almost. People are telling you the truth. Come to the saving grace of God. The Bible said that anyone that calls the name of the Lord shall be saved. And they are telling you. They are singing it. They are preaching it. They are acting it. And you just remain aloof. Because what you are waiting for is pastor to come and visit you. Felix was waiting for Paul to come and visit him and bring him bright. He was, he was waiting. He waited for some time. He said, come next time. Just come and we'll hear you. We are joined. When you join people that do evil, you are evil. Any appearance of evil, any, anything that, that, that has a semblance of evil. What do you do? Get away from it. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 22. Then finally and finally, we sin against the Holy Spirit. Sin against the Holy Spirit. A lot of us, a lot of us are very guilty of it. Sin against the Holy Spirit. Mark chapter 3. Verse 28 to 29. When you refuse to accept the mercies of God, you refuse repentance. You re even refuse. Like the man of God will say, anytime we are having a crusade, and you want to receive, he say, when you hear the final amen, the final amen, say, what, what is he even talking about? What is he saying? I was here yesterday and I was listening to the final amen. Nothing happened. I was the other day. Nothing happened. You go and read Second Kings chapter 5. Your miracle will not take the same pattern 
like the other person's miracle. It could, it could be when you are on your way going home. It could be when you are lying on your bed. And you refuse to hearken to the voice of the man of God. It is the same against the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in that Mark chapter 3, verse 28 to 29, say, every other sin will be forgiven you. But when you sin against the Holy Spirit, that one will not be forgiven. Praise the Lord. Amen. Acts of the Apostles, when you go, you read. From verse 5, 4, 4 and 5. And then 7 to 11. And they went down there. Ananias and Sapphira, they, they ganged up. <laughs> when they came, <laughs> uh, they, everybody was selling what they have. They were not compelled to sell. They were the one who found their own trouble and debt. You are not you. You don't. You don't be like the Joneses. That they are. Uh, let me also go and show off. Every they say when they sell, they bring everything. And when they sold, they kept back some. Peter asked them, saying, Did you, is this everything that you said? Say yes. What was the question that Peter asked him? How can you be sinning against the Holy Spirit? It's not me who sinned against the Holy Spirit. Immediately, Peter said that. He dropped it. Then the wife walked in, thinking that the pastor, Pastor Peter, will see her and say, Well done, I've seen what you brought. In fact, during the early days of some of these churches that we are attending now, if you are a sinner and you bring gifts to the church, they will reject it. They will, they will reject it. They will say, go, take your destiny. Because they, they know who you are. They ask you, your husband, they, you, is that what he say? Ah, Pastor Peter, is true. Say, watch. You have don't, the people that carried your husband out of this place, they have not totally left. Her. They will carry you. And she dropped dead. And the Bible says that and fear engulfed the whole church. Praise the Lord. Amen. So the essence of this message today is for us to look at our lives. And all these things that we have said today and begin to decipher the ones that are applicable to us and begin to make amends. In Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, it says that uh, you should study to I beg both for me. To show yourself unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed. Always doing what? So, that's all. Praise the Lord. Amen. How many of us have been blessed today? Our time has been fast spent. Let us be on our feet and begin to ask God to forgive us in the mighty name of Jesus. Anywhere Anyhow, I have not gotten it. Father, please help me. Father, I don't want to be an enemy to God. I want to be a friend of God. I don't want to do something that will offend my maker in any way. My Lord and my God, help me. Help me, Jehovah. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Everlasting King of glory, we thank you. We give you all the glory and honor. Thank you for exposing this very topical issue to us. 
anywhere we are found not doing the right things. Father, with your staff, direct us and correct us in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, our blessed Jehovah, for in Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, sir.